Hello again. Okay, this is the next stage of aerobic respiration, called the Krebs cycle. It only occurs in the presence of oxygen, uh, and it takes place again in the matrix of the mitochondria. So, like the link reaction, this is occurring in that uh, in that matrix. If you remember from the link reaction, at the end of the link reaction we produce this molecule called acetyl-CoA. Uh, and I said that that acetyl-CoA, or the coenzyme part of that acetyl-CoA, acts a bit, like a, uh, a bit like a taxi service. It collects acetate and then drops it off at the, uh, at the Krebs cycle before going on to pick up more of the acetate molecules. And that's what happens in the first stage. So, the acetyl group separates from the coenzyme A. The CoA then disappears back to the link reaction to collect more, um, to more, to collect more acetyl groups. The Krebs cycle, or one Krebs cycle, finishes with a four carbon molecule. Now, here's a little a warning about this video. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail than the one uh, in your notes. If you'd prefer not to watch this video, that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to go into too much more detail. Um, I'm just going to fill in a couple of little bits that are missing. but. It's really important to say everything that's in, in your notes is enough for what you'll need for the exams. Personally, I find it a little bit easier to understand if I add just a couple more details. Okay, so we have this two carbon acetyl CoA and it combines with a four carbon uh, substrate uh, that is produced at the end of the previous cycle. That produces two plus four, a six carbon molecule. So in your notes, you can see we start with this six carbon molecule. And you'll see in your notes that in the first stage, that six carbon molecule undergoes a, well, I've mentioned this word before. Again, this, is, this word isn't on the specification. But I think it's quite a nice descriptive word. Uh, it undergoes what's called decarboxylation. It loses uh, carbon dioxide. So it loses one carbon to form a five carbon molecule. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. During that stage, this decarboxylation, which is an example of a, an oxidation, is coupled with a reduction. You probably already guessed that that reduction involves oxidated, or sorry, oxidated, oxidized NAD being reduced to form reduced NAD. This five carbon molecule then undergoes another decarboxylation. So it undergoes the loss of carbon dioxide. This is an example of a, an oxidation and therefore at the same time oxidized NAD is reduced by accepting hydrogen and electrons to form reduced NAD. <clears throat> that forms now a one, two, three, four carbon molecule. And this is where the first time I'm going to add in a little bit of detail. That four carbon molecule then undergoes another oxidation to form another four carbon
But as we know, with, uh, with an oxidation, an oxidation, like I said earlier on, is exergonic. It gives off energy. That allows for the phosphorylation of ATP, or phosphorylation of ADP, to form ATP. And this is an example, if you remember back to the video on glycolysis, this is an example of substrate level phosphorylation. So we've now produced an ATP molecule. In the next stage, this four carbon molecule uh, is oxidized again to produce another four carbon molecule. Uh, but in this stage, a new or uh, 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 coenzyme that I've not mentioned yet is introduced. I'll give it a different colour. Okay, very similar to NAD, but this one is called oxidised FAD. Oxidised FAD acts in almost exactly the same way as the NAD. It accepts hydrogen, it accepts electrons uh, during this oxidation of these two substrates to form reduced FAD, or sometimes written as FADH2. Okay, we'll just call it reduced FAD for now. Okay, then... In the final stage, now this is a bit of detail that isn't really necessary, but there is one more substrate here, another four carbon molecule. We can just ignore this stage. But between that one and this final one, we get one more molecule of oxidized NAD being reduced or reduced NAD. Now, if you have a look at your diagram in your notes, uh, you will see that between the five carbon and the four carbon molecules that you have at the end, you've got two oxidized NADs becoming two reduced NADs. You've got the substrate level phosphorylation of ADP into ATP, and you've got the oxidation of FAD, sorry, the reduction of FAD to reduce FAD. All I've done here is just add a couple of little stages in, partly so I can uh, tell you my little rhyme that a biology teacher taught me years ago and has always sort of stuck. You can use this, you don't have to, every time I introduced this to one of my classes, they always laugh at me, but I think generally they do find it quite useful. Okay, my gut rhyme goes like this. Each time there is the decarboxylation and reduction of NAD, I think of this word, DNAR. The D bit, decarboxylation, Na reduction of NAD. So we've got another one there. Dina, Dina. Substrate for level phosphorylation, I just say R. So we've got Dina, Dina, R. Reduction of NAD, I always think of as far. You might have a different accent to me, so you might say them slightly differently. But so far, I've got Dina, Dina, R. Uh, and then, lastly, with the, op, uh, with the reduction of the NAD, this isn't coupled to a 
pick up oxalation. So we've got a final na at the end. So my way for remembering the Krebs cycle is this. Dina, Dina, A, Fa, and do you see this little space here where nothing happens? Dot, dot, dot. No. Now you can sing that to yourself uh, if you like. I've always found that quite useful. Dina, Dina, A, Fa, Na, for remembering each of the sages in the Krebs cycle. Okay, right. Another thing to remember, the Krebs cycle is continuing on from uh, the link reaction, which has continued from glycolysis. We know we started glycolysis with one glucose molecule. That became two uh, triosphosphates, two pyruvates. Those pyruvates became two uh, acetyl-CoA's in, uh, uh, in the link reaction. So starting from one glucose, we have two acetyl-CoA's, which means with each glucose that you begin with, we have two, Cre uh, two Krebs cycles. So when we think about the products from glycolysis, sorry, products from uh, the Krebs cycle, we have, just draw it in down the bottom here, We have to double up everything that we've produced here. So let's start with the carbon dioxide that is going to be removed from the cell and then from the organism. So we lose two carbon dioxide as a waste product. One, two, three with each cycle, so six reduced NADs. We've got one reduced FAD. And, oh sorry, one with each cycle, so two uh, starting from glucose. One ATP by substrate level phosphorylation with each cycle, meaning that we have two ATP being produced. Now suppose at the end we've got this four carbon molecule that goes into the next cycle. Uh, but we can sort of forget about that. The ATP produced by substrate level phosphorylation can then be used to provide, uh, uh, can be hydrolyzed to provide energy for reactions in the cell. The six reduced NAD and the two reduced FAD, along with all of the other NA, reduced NAD uh, from glycolysis uh, and the link reaction, these move on to the final stage of respiration, which is known as oxidative. Phosphor, I'm running out of space here. Phosphorylation, or sometimes referred to as the electron transport chain. And the next video I produce, I will uh, I'll take you through the electron transport chain. Okay. Just to reiterate, the detail that you're given in your notes is enough. I'm sure all of you want to remember my dinar, dinar, afar, na rhyme to make the whole thing work. Uh, I guess most importantly, we need to know what these products are. Okay, thanks a lot.